Yay. Yay. <laughs> All right. So um, hopefully we got some work done. And now in the time remaining, which is about 40 minutes, we're going to talk about your work and your creative process. And anybody have any questions? Yes, we have a question from Melania. Ah, yeah. yay, Melania. How are you doing? Hi, fine. I am so happy that you're here again. <laughs> I love you. Thank yeah. you. I'm so happy that you're here again. Oh, I am happy. Yes, that's great. Um, Susan, let's see what is happening to me. I am at the beginning, I was having this problem of writing, but now I have that courage and I am writing and I am right. showing up and trying to, to do my work. What is happening to me, as I told you last time we talked, is that I am taking a class in, with an Argentine teacher, it's in Spanish, the class, and I am writing their story, it's a, a theater play for children. Right. And what happened to me, what is happening to me is that I am feeling a very weird feeling about what happened is that I give the word to her and she make comments, she make notes and I try to change with what she says, usually if they are good notes. But this last time, she, I don't know why, she didn't see my work or something. And so there was a, a week without any word from her. And suddenly I found myself stuck and expecting that note, you know, coming to me and no, not writing. So suddenly yesterday I said no. I can't do this anymore. I'm going to write anyways, and I'm going to do it without any notes. But what, what is concerning me is this feeling of trying to impress this person. And this happens in my life usually that I, I try to, you know, that people to like me and, uh, but I don't like that. And I don't feel comfortable with that. And I want to create something that comes from me and find my, own voice and I am feeling that this help that I am looking for and I sometimes it's getting in the way but I want to learn I want to do the work uh, I want to do it with help but at the same time I'm feeling that in that I am losing myself trying to make the other person happy or to like me so I don't know what to do in that I, I feel a little you know, like a pandemia in my head again. <laughs> so I need your help. Um, so Melania, how uh, much longer is this class going to be going on? It's maybe one more month, I think. Oh. It is. Yes, it's yeah. at the end, let, let me see, at the end of June. What, what, at the end of June. Okay, so, you, oh, so it's like a month and a half. Month and a half, yes. Is it, does it, did you meet every week? Uh, yes, the idea is an online class and we have a, like a forum, so I, I, she gives some tips and I give my work, she gives the notes, and we work like that. And it's going fine. What happened to me that when the, the, the system changed, because I don't know what happened, that she didn't see my work, and I was <laughs> sending emails saying, I because I, I gave my work on time and everybody was uh, having their notes and I didn't have mine. So suddenly I felt so lost. Like, I don't know how to tell. It was something like being a, like a little child myself, mm -hmm. trying to, to fit in in the situation. And I don't know what is that feeling, but what I know is that in the middle of all of that, I am losing this, um, opportunity of explore myself to, to know what the enthusiasm is. I, I noticed myself uh, checking in the computer to see if I have the notes and it was almost, I didn't like it. I said, I don't like this. So yesterday mm -hmm. I checked that. I, I began to, to write again. Mm -hmm. But I would love to, to hear from, from you what you think and how can I work on this? Because I want to write. Right. And I want to do the work, but I... I wasn't looking for this. It was something that suddenly I found myself in the middle of and mm -hmm. I want to. Well, I, I wonder, you know, a, a lot of times we, um, 
you know, we think, oh, we need something like a, a car or a dress or a pair of shoes or a spouse or a class, whatever, mm -hmm. um, because we can't get where we're going without that thing. Mm -hmm. I can't feel good without that pair of shoes, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And then you buy them and you're like, hey. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, um, but the, the, our, our, our feeling of, of I can't do it alone, mm -hmm makes us reach out to certain things, whether they be people, classes or whatever. So I feel like you're in the middle of a process. Before you started that class, you were feeling like I can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. And so you reach out to the class. Yes. And now you, you, it's, it's a I mean, it's not a bad class. It sounds like a really good class, but it is creating a, a um, dependency yes you know what i mean um and and teachers you know they have their own schedules as you know their own lives and they they might get your note i mean they might not get around to all the notes and all that so it's not about you it was it's just that it's creating creating a to do your writing you got to get my notes first because you're responding to my notes to write yeah and what you're learning so you reached out to this class because you thought i can't i can't do it without the class what you're learning is i i i can do it without the class that doesn't say that you don't want to learn from someone who knows more than you yeah. but you don't want to have this feeling of dependency which means you might be outgrowing the feeling like i can't do it without this kind of help uh -huh. So I would suggest, you know, if you, you have, how many pages do you have to turn in a week? Um, it, it, it's, you know, it's, it's for scenes. So right. sometimes it's less than 10 pages. It's something, it's short. It's short. more than, like, yes. One, great, one, one, great. Yeah. So what you, so, so you have to turn, and then, and then how quickly do, does the teacher send back the notes? At the beginning, it was very quickly. Yeah. And I don't know what happened yeah. then uh, that the, the rhythm changes because as you say, she has a life, of course. Uh, yeah. Yes, so yeah, what I, I don't want is to depend on these notes in order to write. I didn't like that about myself. Well, right, I, so, so Melania, don't. That's all I'm saying, don't depend on them. You turn in your pages, Yeah. right? Uh, say you turn in your pages on a Monday. Yeah, this is it. Okay. And then uh, usually you turn in your pages, wait for the notes to then re go forward, right? So yes. instead, we're cutting out the middle process. You turn in your pages, you start writing your next pages. Okay. You don't wait for the notes. I'm not saying don't pay attention to the notes, right? Mm -hmm. But don't wait for them to come before you take action. Okay. So turn in your pages and keep, and then start writing Tuesday. You know, th there's nothing that you're not waiting for anything. Okay. You I understand? Like and yeah. when her notes come, whenever they come, great. You might not read them right away. Okay. <laughs> you know, you got a life, you got kids, you're homeschooling, you got writing to do, you know, you might not read them right away. Maybe you're going to read them after a couple of weeks. The most important thing is that you keep writing. Okay. Okay. So, so just put some space in between it. Realize that it's the class seems very helpful. The notes seem good, but the dependency issue uh, is not working for you. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to just put some space in between it. Okay. I like that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I am so happy that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. It's so great to see you. So Thank you. You. Um, all right, a couple more questions have popped up. Okay. Um, we've got Marlene. Go over, okay. Marlene. Hey, Marlene. Hi, Susie Laurie. I'm so happy to be back with you. Uh, former New Yorker, now Angelino. Oh, right on. So I have written this solo show and am in rehearsal with it now. So part of it is really nice in that. I, and I don't say this lightly, but like, oh, I'm surprised at how good it is. Like Yay. the text. Great. Um, because it gives 
the performer away into it and they can do all these things. But so I have that, I'm at that point where um, everything seems promising and you can see, yes, I can see that this is going to be, I can see the whole, but there's a lot of work that you got to do to get to that hole still. Um, and so sometimes I, I get really nervous. One is, um, I think it's an issue about being seen because mm -hmm. there's this idea of um, growing up, I was like told you got to be the best mm. at everything that you do, mm. but do stay in the middle. Cause if you're seen, then there could be some, you could become a target at some point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also like I, that when you, when you dive into the work, you can take that joy, but at a certain point, like things don't work. So you're looking for solutions and things. So <laughs> I guess I'm asking like how to sustain or how to remember the joy, even when, uh, you know, that scene just isn't working or you can't sort of live up to the scene anymore. Uh huh. Well, what sounds great is that Marlene, it sounds like you've written a beautiful piece and you're excited about it. You know, I am excited about yeah, it. Yeah, I think I think the tricky thing is, I mean, it's not tricky, really. It's just how to maintain your enthusiasm while going to the next level. That's what, exactly what it. Needs, you know, and that's my question. How are you, yeah. How are you with like lists? You know, I mean, it seems like so the writing was a big, huge, ginormous thing. You managed to accomplish it. Hooray. Now yeah. you got to go into the next phase. Are there, I mean, maybe there are like 20 things that you have to do. Oh my God. And they're all like, ah, <laughs> and it's different from your writing head, you know, which yes. is, which you managed to, to, to work with really well. So what about making just like a list? Like, so what are the 20 things I got to do to get this project to the next level? You know, mm. I got, it doesn't have to be organized. You could just grab a piece of paper uh, longhand is really good, you know, or in your notebook, the, the 27 thing, the 27 fucking things I got to do to get this, you know what I mean? You can just yes. write them down. They can be in any order. It doesn't have to be organized or anything. Just write it, get them out of your head onto the page. Then you look at it and go, okay, are, do some of these things take more than one step? You know, um, so maybe this is this one item is like three or four things right, right? um great so you do that okay so at the end of after you've worked on your list you have a really comprehensive list then say okay what can i do today you know do some of these things do, does something have to be done before something else happens you know just organize your list it's a different kind of brain than your writing yeah. brain it's your producer brain so just enjoy that yeah, no, it's it's true because the producer brain, usually it's the producer brain who has an idea and then the writer brain was like, wait, I got to do what? Hmm. But this time the writer brain was like, I got this nice little thing and here you That's go. And the producer's right. like, oh shit, I didn't expect it this early. Right. Okay, right. good. Yeah, so just have fun, have fun, you know, organizing it, you know? Okay, have fun in that, in that producer brain. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good time. Thank you so much. I appreciate You're welcome, it. welcome, Marlene. Thanks, Marlene. We love a producer brain. Um, <laughs> all right, Jennifer is next. Go for it, Jennifer. Hi, it's so great to, to meet you, Suzanne, and to be around all this space where, you know, everyone's writing at the same time. It's very encouraging. Um, so I have a question for you. I'm working on a piece now that's about a person who has lived and as I was writing it, another issue sort of came to mind as I was writing it. And now I'm kind of stuck between being like true to the person's story, but at the same time, kind of going in this fictional direction. And, and I know that I can sort of say it's loosely inspired by this woman, but I'm feeling a little bit like I should be true if I'm putting it out there that people might think she actually did this. And I'm kind of stuck between taking the story in the direction it seems to be going versus keeping it true to like her real life. Have you right, experienced right. that before or have any thoughts about that? Well, sure. I mean, I, I think it's, um, is she a, um, a known person? Like, is she like, uh, I don't know who's a known, you know, uh, I don't know, someone that we all would know and go, ah, she didn't do that. She didn't, 
fly airplanes by herself or whatever is it is it something like that that would the thing that you're in the elements that you're introducing would they get in the way of her story and just kind of pull focus i don't think so i just don't think these are the issues she was passionate about but because she lived in a time when these issues weren't really at the forefront um but yeah she would be known in certain circles but not like a common household name Right. So why are you introducing issues that she wasn't passionate about if you want to tell her story? I think it's because she, the subject she taught, speech, sort of relates to these issues of like racial and cultural identity. And I think they're just sort of things as a teacher that I'm sort of seeing with my students and they, they seem to be coming up. But I'm wondering if maybe they should be in a separate piece and maybe not this piece maybe they should maybe there's another character who might embody these things in the play or this in the whatever you're writing yeah you know, it's just sort of i i don't i don't i mean she i you know if if there are issues of the day that are thematically related to your character's journey then maybe there's another character who is going to be is going to give voice, give authentic voice to those things that you're interested in talking about, rather than stand, you know, shoving it all into your main character's mouth. Mm -hmm. This is just kind of a, a spokes puppet for some agenda that you've got or some interesting details that you found. Oh my God, look at all this cool stuff that I know, you know, instead of having it be a, a real interactive thing between characters. I, I could see that. Yeah, that, that is definitely more interesting to watch too than making right. a didactic thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and that, that's what other characters do in a play or a novel or whatever. They bring up those parallel universes or issues, you know, so we weave them together like that. Yeah, no, yeah. thank you. I appreciate that. I've that's just been good. really kind of stuck on on that. So thank you. It's always good to hear from someone else because yeah. you're kind of stuck in your own head. <laughs> I hear you. I've been there. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks, Jennifer. Sorry, I'm on two screens right now. Um, but next we've got, um, I'm not going to say your name right. I'm so sorry. It's V-A-N-E-I-K. V-A-N-E-I-K. Are you unmuted? Hi, it's Vanik. Oh, Vanik. Hi, Vanik. Yeah. Uh, Sister Susan Laurie, it's such a pleasure hey, to meet man. you. Um, it, it really absolutely is a huge pleasure to meet you. Um, Likewise, I'm man. A, I'm a huge, huge fan of Venus. Um, and I want to say that uh, it's probably one of, the, uh, one of the stories, it's one of the paintings that remains in my life all the time. I remember the first time I read it. And uh, uh, if you don't mind me saying so, it, it, there's, there's something about that style that uh, reminds me a lot about Brother Baraka's work, um, Amiri Baraka. And um, I am... Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's one of it's one of the pieces that stays with me all the time. And now, a question that I have, I've never seen it produced. I, I've never seen a performance of it. <clears throat> so all I have about it is my imagination. <clears throat> and when I think about it, I always think about how um, it, it must be choreographed. Um, it, it seems to me that uh, in my imagination. <laughs> Every move and every sound, uh, it's been composed. And uh, and what am I trying to say here? Um, I guess what I'm trying to get to is when you created that piece of work, where were you in space and how did you get the mainstream theater audience or the mainstream theater producers to even entertain um, something that for me, I think it's, it's offside. It's, it's not something that the mainstream theater would embrace. Where were you in that place? But, 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 Vinay, I love the question, but because this is about your work and your creative process, oh okay. no. Well, All right. so, what we have to say is like, how, where, where, where can one write something authentic from? And then how do you take it to the marketplace and get other people to do it. Is that- I think yeah. definitely. And I think also being, I think that's exactly the question. I think the one thing I would add is to be self-aware that the paradigm 
paradigm is something other than where that thing comes from. Right, right. Well, I mean, the authentic place is just, you know, you have to keep digging, you know, you have to keep excavating. I mean, that play, Venus took me a long time to write. I had many miss starts, but I was, I guess, aware enough to know that it just wasn't sounding right. It just wasn't gelling, you know? So I just kept digging because it just didn't, um, you know, if you play an instrument, uh, my son plays a violin, but you know, you, you hear when the notes aren't right and you have to adjust. You know, it's constant, constant, even if you play a fretted instrument, you're constantly adjusting. And it's that kind of thing that your ear is tuned. You can, you, you, you're finding those notes. Um, and so it, it's a process of that. So you have to, to write from an authentic place, you have to continually, um, you're, you know, it's weird. You're satisfied with your work. You pat yourself on the back. Good job. I did my draft. You know, you're not trying to get it perfect. You're trying to get it just right. And if it ain't laying right, as they say in music, then no, you got to right. keep working it, right? You got to keep You got to keep polishing that stone, right? Exactly. Not to get it perfect, but just to get it to lay right. Okay. So there's that. So to write from an authentic place, um, the paradigm, I mean, I wasn't thinking too much about like, I got to do something out of the box or anything like that. I never work like that. I just think I got to tell the story the way I can tell it. So, so then the follow-up to that is, so did you, did you have to do any extra work to get the mainstream theater, a producer, an audience to embrace it or to find interest in it? Yeah, there's the, the, the that's a funny thing. Mainstream, I mean, you know, I mean, I mainstream, yeah, mainstream, <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it is done in, you know, it was done at the public theater, then at Signature for my retrospective, you know, it's been done in colleges. It has not been embraced by mainstream theater, Yeah. Um, which uh, I don't really care. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel like I told the story as best I could with the tools I had and did the story that I wanted to tell. Um, I got it to lay right. You did. Yeah. And then if mainstream, you know, Broadway or, or, or I don't know what, other, you know, blah, blah, big time theater doesn't want to do it. I don't care. You know, I, that's not you. my, that's, that's, I, I think that's what's important to, to, again, to write from an authentic place, to get it true to what you want to say. And then to kind of you know try to get it done sure if you want it produced somewhere try but don't despair if it is not found in favor by the commercial establishment you know what i mean um yeah. you know i mean there are wonderful plays running you know big productions you know whatever when broadway you know on broadway and all that they're fabulous and everything and there's a lot of shit Death. And so we don't, we're not just trying to get up there into the river of shit. Um, sometimes we got to just be, I mean, and also there's a lot of crap like off, off, off Broadway. You got to tell it true to, to what you want to do and let the marketplace do what it's going to do. Yeah. So that's kind of how I work it anyway. I feel that. Okay. I feel that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Great question. Yeah, death. Thank you. So nice to meet you. Um, all right. Um, up next, we've got Ray. Ray. Oh, are you on Hi. Hi. Oh my God. Hi. Hi, Ray. <laughs> this isn't actually the first time I met you. I met you actually in the lobby of the public, public theater about a year, a little less than a year ago with, uh -huh. um, um, with Diana's son. And I freaked oh. out. Aaron Courtney introduced us and I... Oh lost my mind a little oh. bit um it's so great that you're doing this uh, workshop because one of the questions i have is that i'm about to graduate from college um my yeah uh, my undergrad and i feel like not only have i sort of lost this great institutional support mm -hmm. but i'm also currently the theater community is sort of fallen into this weird anomalous space and we are unable to, to gather and convene in the way that theater requires. Um, so in times like this where so much of theater has been put on hold or has been forced to 
change and shift its form, where do you find the discipline and strength to continue to propel yourself to write and produce work? Because I've been in a real slump for the past month as I'm trying to like crank out both of my theses and mm -hmm. my creativity is become so erratic. So where, where do you find the discipline? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's a real, that's a really great question. Um, it, it's tricky. You're in an institution in an academic setting where um, certain things are promised uh, in return for the work. So, I mean, it's kind of like uh, what Melania was talking about, you know, in return for her turning in pages, her teacher would give her notes, which is great, except a, a, a link and a meshment, a dependency is created. So in turn, so you're gonna write, for example, finish your play and you're gonna get maybe a grade or a completed class or a diploma or something. You're gonna get, right? You're gonna get that something, um, which is all really good. And I'm sure your program is a beautiful writing program or a program. The tricky thing is, is that now, or it's great because you're gonna have to learn this and you might as well learn it now. You're going out into the field. You're going back out into the field of possibility and potential and imagination you're going mm -hmm. back out there so you've been in the in the kind of the cloister right now you're going back out into the field and you have to create you have to establish or re-establish the connection between your work and what what's the payoff it's not a mm -hmm. diploma it's not a grade it's not notes from a teacher what is it ray that's going to give you that feeling that you're seeking what is it do you think well it's not just that i derived necessarily a good grade or something sure. from it but i also find an artistic joy in it and it so crucial to who i am and for a very long time i felt like a constantly needed to write. Like if I was breathing, if I was dreaming, if I was drinking water, I was writing like, and right. so I'm, I'm trying to find that again. Right, well that, that's exactly what you need to reconnect yourself with. Just the joy, the artistic joy of doing the work, mm -hmm. regardless of where it's gonna get produced. I mean, and you know, because we have this community here, there are communities out there, there are, there are different ways of making theater and, and connecting with folks and all that. So it's not like we're unable to connect with each other, which is oh, a this real is my blessing. first time I'm here. I'm so grateful. I didn't oh know. Oh my about gosh, this. Where, where, where you been? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but you know, but there are lots of online communities mm. now, but, but regardless uh, put, put all that aside mm -hmm. you need to reconnect with that beautiful thing that's in you if i were breathing if i were drinking water i would be writing like that mm -hmm. it's the thing i love to do regardless of what theater it's going to get produced in or what stage and what theater or who's mm -hmm. going to direct it or what actress i'm going to find to start yeah it, that's that's not helpful, mm -hmm. especially these days, <laughs> right? So, right. you know, work your play, write your play, write your thing. You know, it doesn't have to be a play, but work on your thing for the joy, for the, just the basic joy of working on it. And then it, when you gather in communities, you can, can, you can share it. And that's the next level of joy. Mm. Oh, I love that, that they're different. They're totally different things totally different. because sometimes I feel like they're so intertwined, but they can totally be separate. That's, Thank you so much. Yeah, that's the trap. That's the trap when we mm -hmm. start intertwining them and we connect good artistic feeling with, did I get it on Broadway? Hmm. Or how much money am I making? Or what are the numbers? Or how many viewers did I get in my, from the show, the TV show I wrote, you know? How much money did I make? What, what's the bottom line? The opening, opening weekend in my movie. Did I make it? You know, that kind of thing. We're connecting those things. And that's a false, it's, it's not a helpful connection for artists, for business people who count the beans and all that. Oh yes, they need to do that. But we should not be creating from that place 
uh, because that I feel will just poison the well. And that's part of what some of us are experiencing these days when we go, ah, okay, I'm having a hard time because mm. we connect that. And what we need to do is just, we just need to see that that has a, a, an importance and a place, the commerce of it, sure, but it's separate from the artistic thing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great. And come back. We're here. Yes. Yeah, I I know. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Ray. Um, all right. We've got just about five and a half minutes left. Um, and I'm going to go to Richard. Richard, can you hear us? Richard. Hmm. Richard. Richard. Can you try this again? Yeah. Oh. I don't seem to see him anymore. Richard, where did you go? All right, well, if you come back, Richard, and you have a question, we are we are here for you. Um, but if you don't, we actually have um, a question that came into the Public Theater social media channel. Oh, good. Um, from someone named Angle. Uh, and the question is, how do you get unstuck? Uh, that's a great question. And I have like a hundred bazillion ways to do this. Um, the first thing I would say is why, when you, when you ask that question, uh, I would say stand up, stand up. And I've talked about this for a while. I don't have my little step stool, but if you have a plastic step, I have this plastic step stool, which is in the kitchen right now. And I'm not going to get up, but, uh, cause I don't want to stop talking to you, but it's, um, well, let me see. It's what I can do is I can stand up. Let me see if I can unplug the. Here we go. Ah. And I could come over here and I'll get the step stool. It's great. It's this little cheap thing that you can see how big my apartment is. That's where the kitchen is right there. But it's this thing. It's this little, see, you've seen these on Amazon and they're cheap. And I would say, if you want to get unstuck, stand up, move your ass. And look, now I have a standing desk. Do you see this? See, it's just like, can you see it? Eh, see, eh. it's sitting on the table like that. So that's a really good way to get unstuck. You move your shit around, you know? Um, when I'm stuck, I start moving my shit around because it's like, it's like you're sitting and all your energy is pooling in your legs and in your butt. Stand up, now you're writing like this. Also use a timer. This is why we use a timer. Give yourself five minutes and say, I'm going to write on my project for five minutes. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Okay, that's it. Phew, I made it. Five minutes. It's like if you were training for a marathon, right? And you didn't, you were not a runner. You go out and run for five minutes. That's okay. And then tomorrow you do a little bit more in that and you, you build it like that. Okay. So I would say, start moving your body around. I would say, Use a timer and get really short increments of time. That's one way that you can lower the bar. We talk a lot about lowering the bar, right? Just make it manageable. A lot of times when we're stuck, we're overwhelmed. You know, like Marlene was like, I've written this beautiful thing and now what do I do? Ah, let's just make it bite-sized pieces. So we get up, we move our body around, we use a timer small increments of time we work on. Maybe you can write five minutes uh, three times a day. Yay, that's 15 minutes, okay? We also lower the bar so it can be shitty writing. Again, we're not, ta we're not talking about quality. It doesn't have to be, oh my God, it's brilliant. No, it can be just blah, 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 vomit, blah, 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 blah. okay? Because you're working through stuff, right? Um, those three things are super helpful. And I've got like a million other things, but those are the three things I, you know, look, I'm standing now. I'm, I'm not, I don't feel stuck at all. I That's wasn't stuck before. But. Perfect. I love to stand just a little. Right. Um, <laughs> you can like, ah, nah, 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 nah. turn on some music. Eh, eh. Right. You can also go for a walk, wear your mask. You know, you can do some jumping jacks and play. I mean, but it's always a good question to ask because you know we are often stuck awesome thank you um yeah. all right we have just about a minute left and richard has returned yeah richard <laughs> let's see all right richard 
Are you unmuted? Uh-oh. 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 I'm having a struggle getting him unmuted. Hmm. Can't see him. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, there we go, Richard. Hi. Oh, Hi, Suki Richard. Lori. Hi. 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 Thank you so much for what you do. Um, I've been writing, writing, writing. I reread it again, and it feels like it has nothing to do with what's happening in the world today. Right. And I want to run away from it. Right, okay. It just feels uh, irrelevant. Right. So you- What to do? Great question. What a great question. So you've been writing, 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 and you say that you, you read it over and it just doesn't feel like it's got anything to do with the world today. Right. And it feels irrelevant. It feels like a lot of Beckett, Albee, that's it. That's okay. I, that's great, but- it doesn't feel now. Doesn't have to. What, what is now anyway? I mean, for each one of us in this group right now, now is a totally different thing. My now ain't your now. What I'm going through, shit, I got an eight-year-old child who's up in here doing math at nine o'clock in the morning. I want to go, ah, I want to eat you. You know, what, 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 is that relevant? I don't know. That's what I'm going through. You know what I'm saying? You're relevant. You're, what you're going through is, specific to your thing, right? So I would say keep writing and ask yourself maybe as you go along, what would make it relevant? Why am I not putting in stuff that's going on now? You know what I mean? Ask yourself those questions, but keep writing. Don't let that nagging mean voice in your head. It's not relevant. Talk to the ham motherfucker. I got work to do, right? Keep writing. You're digging, Richard, right? You're digging. So if you're digging, trying to find that relevant thing, keep digging. You're on a path, okay? Uh, how many pages do you have? 17. Okay, so what if you get to like 25 and you find it? Yeah, yeah, you heard of the gold rush, right? And shit. Exactly. You know, those people were out there looking for shit or, or like, like, like the Underground Railroad and shit. I mean, people had to work to get shit, right? I mean, back in the day, right? People had to work, even, 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 even immigrants coming to America, shit, they got to, you know, people got to like work. We forget that we come from people like that. Try to get to page 20. See what happens right if you're trying to find that vein of gold that 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 relevant thing you know you dig keep digging right yes and keep on coming back always always whether you come back here or whether it's to your own work keep coming back to your to to this place where we'll cheer you on you know and we won't give up on you even though we can't uh, couldn't unmute you the first time right and, and that is a reminder that we can't give up on each other and we can't give up on ourselves and our creative process. And that's why I show up doing this show to remind us all of that, not just you guys, I remind myself too. It's 5.02, speaking of, I mean, 6.02. It's oh 602. my God, the time Here we are. And I'm standing at my desk. I'm okay. standing at my desk, yeah. So uh, tomorrow uh, is going to be Tuesday all day long. That's and correct. We'll be, <laughs> we'll be here. As a reminder, you can sign up uh, to be inside of the Zoom by 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every single day on the Public Theater website. And I will send you a link between 3 and 4.30 p.m. Eastern. And we'll see you at 5. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Audrey. Bye. Thanks, HowlRound. Bye. Bye.